folks at home, it is time to add fish to the bass pond. But if you guys watched our last video, we built this beautiful pond and then had Hurricane Gordon come in two days later, dump a ton of rain on it, and it washed a lot of mud in. So before we can add fish, and you guys know I like to take care of my fish, so we're installing two drains here that are gonna reroute the water around the pond and down the hill. So we're making some progress here in the backyard. They dug a large trench here, laid the six inch pipe down, going to carry our water out from all the way up there but funny story I come out this morning and Josh here says hey don't I know you <laughs> so give your company a shout out you work for uh, Southern, Bay Southern Bay Landscaping Southern Bay Landscaping so that goes to show you you never know who you may be doing a job for until you come in <laughs> you see this big pond here and say hmm I think I've seen this before <laughs> so thanks for watching and you might see yourself in our next video. They have hand dug this entire trench in this red clay. We've got this guy here. What's your name? Deshaun. So we've got Deshaun here digging the big hole for the drain basin. That's the 18 inch. And then we've got a 12 inch that we're, that's gonna be dug over here. And we may eventually have some gutters installed on the house. So everything will tie together, run all the way down the hill. Lunchtime progress report. Looking good. And look at the pond. You can finally see the bottom. So exciting. All right, happy to report we got our two drains installed. I also added some aqua blue stones and a felt liner up under this straw to help out with erosion. These guys did a great job, but we had one small problem. Whenever they were transporting some of this red clay out, it dumped over into the pond. <laughs> so now I'm back to square one. We finally got visibility in it, but now I've got to drain it and get all this mud out. But hey, at least I'm getting some pond cleaning experience. So folks, I have had this pond for one week and I've drained it three times. This is my third time draining. I've almost got every bit of that mud cleaned out of it. The nice thing about these new drains is that I can just pump that sump water straight into the drain. You can see it's, it can handle a lot of water. It's all shooting through that pipe right there, big six inch pipe. All right, folks, we just got a heavy rain right after we put these drains in and they are working out beautiful. This one right here is getting all the rain coming in off the house. This one over here is getting all the rain coming in off that hill up there. Well, folks, we got our first wild pet in the pool, a little frog. I hope he enjoys it now because when the bass get in here, I'm feeling no frogs are allowed. The pond is looking great, and the goal for this video is to stock this pond with bait fish, and then in the next video, put the bass and potentially even some crappie and bluegill and things like that in here. You can see I've already got some bait fish acclimating right now. We'll be going over those here in just a minute, but I'm going to kind of give you guys a quick tour of the pond. You can see that the storms kind of hit our lilies. I'm hoping that they can rebound from that. We had to drain the pond so many times. They're not doing so great. The other plants are looking pretty good over there. Waterfall's looking great. Water clarity's finally where we want it to be. You can see all the way down there to the bottom. And I'm thinking later in this video, I'm either going to get down in the water or put a GoPro down in there and give you an underwater tour. Time to add some fish. The first fish that we are going to be adding to the pond are baby catfish. So we've got three baby channel catfish and one albino catfish. Now they may not all survive because it is a bass pond, but they couldn't have a pond with any better odds. There's a million places for them to hide down in the cracks, underneath the rocks. So it's just like out in the wild. As baby catfish, they have to learn to survive and avoid being eaten by bass and other bigger predators. So we're gonna put them in first, let them explore the pond and go on and find their hiding spots before we put anything in that are big enough to eat them. There's a good look at them right there. Alright, got them all in the net. Let's watch them swim away into their new home. Albano shot off. I had them in here about 30 minutes, so they're already acclimated to the water. But look at them, bottom feeders right there. Just hanging out on the rocks. Not moving much at all. It's going to be hard to spot these guys. Definitely blend in with the environment but that albino he took off quick hey there's the albino right there he's heading for the deep water man he just went under that big rock right here all right there's the last little guy right there he's coming down looks like he's about to head for some deeper water hiding out by the stump right now all right the next thing going into the pond you guys would have never guessed it check him out we got three tadpoles. 
these are going to turn into bullfrogs. And if you guys have been following our channel for a while, you remember Lucky the Frog. We put him in with our bass in our 300 gallon tank and he survived and we released him. So these guys are going to get put in. Hopefully they'll turn into bullfrogs and be a little bit more agile before we put our bass in. So let's go ahead and ease these guys off in. And there they go. Very similar to the catfish. He's hiding out down there on the rocks right now. Yep, and he's up. Alright, so typically we'd name these fish, but since these may turn into bait rather than pets, we're not going to name any of these. The next fish that I'm putting in are definitely going to be bait. So let's go ahead and add some of those in. Alright, next up are what I call bass snacks. These are about a dozen crappie minnows, and that's almost primarily what our bass eat. So I have no doubt that these will not be pets, but rather bait. So we're going to drop them in. Swim off. Heading down deep. There's one there. And these guys go to the bottom quick. Yep, there's some more on the bottom there. So a lot of you guys may be wondering why I'm putting all this bait in before I actually put any bass or crappie in. And that's because all of these bait, even though they're small, they're going to help cycle this pond. They're waste and everything that gets those water levels right. And I don't want to put Bonnie and Clyde in this pond until everything's just right. Something else I've done, I've taken Bonnie and Clyde's filter out of the 300 gallon tank and put it in the skimmer. And all of that bacteria and things that are in that filter will help cycle the pond even quicker. We got one more fish on the agenda and that's called the mosquito fish. All right, we're gonna get some of these mosquito fish. We got Liz and the baby. You wanna get some mosquito fish? So yeah, yeah. that sounds like fun. Look at the big toys. What's the blooms on those guys? I've seen anything quite like that. That's pretty cool. You want to play in the pond, don't you? All right, next up are going to be the mosquito fish. These little guys are really good at eating mosquito eggs, and they also repopulate like crazy. You can see most of these are little bitty hatchlings, but we do have a couple of the big boys down there on the bottom. All right, time to get introduced to the pond. And they're off. Look at them. Heading straight out deep. <laughs> they're just schooling all the way around the pond. Looks like they're somewhat of a schooling breed. They're all hanging out together over there by the skimmer now. Oh, don't go in there. <laughs> Time to swim upstream. Quick. And so it looks like that's the spot they like hanging out by. The really shallow water with, I guess, a pretty strong current flow right through there. They might can survive if they stay in that shallow water like that. Because I don't know if any of these bigger fish are going to get up in there and mess with them. Alright folks, feeding Moby is getting out of hand. Even if you're just putting one minnow in this tank, I'm going to get soaked on these. Watch. He makes a mess every time. Look at him. He's bust. Look at him. Moby, you're knocking water out of there before the minnow even hits. He is a nut. Time to let the big girl eat. Got it. Time to feed the boys. Mm. Clyde is tearing them up. Sheriff, you better get to going. We got one last one there. Oh, Sheriff got him. So while I was at streets, I got a couple extra lilies. I'm putting one of them right here by the waterfall, and my goal is to make a lot of room for these bait fish to hide up in here and also provide shade and cover for the bass. I got another one with a really cool little bloom on it. It's not showing now, but it probably will be tomorrow. So again, just more vegetation along the perimeter here to where the bait fish can have a place to hide, lay eggs. But the bass and frogs will definitely appreciate lily pads as well. 